Let's turn our Bibles to Colossians. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. The title of the message is, Have I done my best for Jesus? Have I done my best for Jesus? Colossians 3, 23. Have I done my best for Jesus? And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto man. Brother Calvin? Would you please pray for the message? Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we pray, Lord. Um, just, Lord, thank you for your word, King James Bible. Lord, thank you for Bible-believing preachers. And, Lord, thank you for uh, Pastor Jay for bringing this message. Please fill him with the Holy Spirit, Lord. Give him the word. Speak through him to us, to our hearts, Lord. And prepare our hearts. Give us the wisdom to understand your word. May Pastor Jay preach with your authority, power, freedom, and liberty. Amen. And Lord, please use them mightily today, Lord. Reach the ends of the world today, Lord, through the internet. Yes. And Lord, reach the deepest part of our hearts today. Amen. Help us to become a better Christian. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. So as I was preparing for a message today, and you know, it went back and forth, and... The Lord sent me on this message, Have I Done My Best for Jesus? It's a message that we hear many, many times. It's a message that we have it in our heart. And there's importance in this message, Have I Done My Best for Jesus? We have a hymn called, Have I Done My Best for Jesus? It goes like this, I wonder, have I done my best for Jesus, who died upon the cruel tree, to think of his great sacrifice at Calvary, I know my Lord expects the best from me. Verse 2 goes, The hours that I have wasted are so many. The hours I've spent for Christ so few. Because of all my lack of love for Jesus, I wonder if his heart is breaking too. Verse 3, I wonder have I cared enough for others, or have I let them die alone? I might have helped the wanderer to the Savior, the seed of precious life I might have sown. Verse 4, no longer will I stay within the valley. I'll climb to mountain heights above. The world is dying now for want of someone to tell them of the Savior's matchless love. And the chorus goes, how many are the lost that I have lifted? How many are the chained I've helped to free? I wonder have I done my best for Jesus when he has done so much for me. As we go on with our busy lives, this is a question that always slips through our minds. You know, have I done my best for Jesus? You do your best for many, many things. Many of you will do your best for your work. I'm pretty sure you know, some people, work is your life. And it includes unsaved, saved, you know, Christian, Bible-believing Christian, KJV only. You know, as a Bible believer, sometimes you do your best for your work more than for Jesus Christ. And sometimes you do your best for your family. Nothing wrong with it. You know, your family's first, you know, your wife, your husband, your grandparents, your children. But have you done best for Jesus? And sometimes it comes to your health, it comes to your exercise, it comes to everything, hobbies in the world. You know, some people have hobbies of playing sports, hobbies of, you know, recreation. You do your best. But when it comes to Lord Jesus Christ, have you done your best? It's a question that always, always will haunt you because you don't do your best. A lot of times, people are so inundated with everything that's going on in their life, they just forget to do their best for Lord Jesus Christ. Only time you really do your best is, seems like after you hear a preaching or something really goes bad in your life or something really goes good in your life, but you forget anyways. How many of you guys can honestly say, we're already in March, you've done your best for the Lord in January as well as in February? A lot of people say, you know, how can you measure that? You just look at your heart. What's your heart, you know, looking unto Lord Jesus Christ? Have you spent enough time with the Lord Jesus Christ? You know, there are no regrets 
For example, if you have a test next Saturday or next Friday or next weekend, and if you spend all your might and effort, as in every free time or every opportunity that you have, you spend for that test and you do your best, you prepare for it. A lot of people will say, I have no regrets. I've done everything I can. You know, I have no regrets. When you look at your Christian walk, when you look at how you've been serving Jesus Christ, do you have any regrets? I mean, are you doing your best when it comes to Lord Jesus Christ? I mean, do you, have you loved the Lord Jesus Christ with your all best? Because many of you guys, love is just a concept. It's not like charity or anything. You know Christ loves you and because you're saved because he first loved you. But however, you don't give that love back to Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, think about it. If you love someone, you actually do something back, right? You, through action, through thoughts, and you do something in return. But however, how many of you guys actually have any kind of relations with Lord Jesus Christ? How can you do best for Lord Jesus Christ when you don't even have any type of relationship? How are you different from Jehovah's Witnesses out there? They're just standing out there. How about the Mormons? They think they're doing their best. But however, they don't even have a personal relation with Lord Jesus Christ because they're not even saved. But you're saved. You trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. What are you doing for the Lord Jesus Christ? How are you showing your love for Jesus Christ? There's a famous saying, salvation depends upon Christ's work for us, while rewards depend upon our work for Christ. So you have to work. You know, charity is about sacrifice. Love is about working. I mean, you know, those Hollywood love never lasts. If you got to marry with your spouse just because of the butterfly feelings in your stomach, it's not going to last. That thing's going to fly away, and it will never come back. Then you have to work at it. That's what charity is. Then when it comes to your love for Jesus Christ, you have to work at it. I mean, have you done your best for Jesus Christ? So number one, are you working to do your best for Lord Jesus Christ? I mean, best is, again, you know, to people it's relative, right? But you understand what your best is. If your best is spending two hours each day in the Word of God and praying and having relationship with Lord Jesus Christ in you know, prayer, then that's your best. And you know your best. And you know yourself better than anybody else. Then have you been doing that at all? I mean, have you actually, each day at the end of the day, were you like, man, Lord, thank you for giving me grace and mercy to do my best for you. I have no regrets today. When was the last time you even prayed like that, where you were doing your best for the Lord? Because honestly, you guys and myself included, you're such a hypocritical person. Yes. You say you love Jesus Christ, but you don't do your best for Jesus Christ. Amen. You don't even mind to do best for Jesus Christ. Sometimes I look at myself and I'm like, man, I give my all. You know, I try to be a good example you know, with my work. And when I look at my time with Jesus Christ, man, I don't spend as much time as I should, right? right? You do extra time for your work because, you know, you want to be a good example. But when was the last time you ever spent extra time with Jesus Christ? When was the last time you had the desire to know more about Jesus Christ? It's like this, okay, today you are here at church, and then you are confined in a structure of time. So you have to stay here, you have to listen, and you have to go to Bible study, and you do practice. But however, when you get home, what do you do? Do you have desire to spend extra time in the Word of God, knowing more about Jesus Christ, doing more for Jesus Christ? If you don't want to do it, then it's never going to work. I mean, when was the last time you actually wanted to spend more time with the Lord than things of the world? Because all of you guys want to just succeed in the world. I mean, it's simple. It's a human nature. True. Yeah, you want to get the best job. You want to show off to people. I mean, yes. that's a, it's a horrible thing at a church where your focus of conversation is not what you do best for Jesus Christ. It's what you do best for yourself. 
It's like, oh, you know, I mean, at school, and a lot of times conversation goes back to your pride, right? What you did. Yeah, yeah you know, it's, there's so much fun, you know, doing this worldly stuff. There's so much fun, these things I do at work. There's so much fun, blah, blah, blah. I mean, if the other brother or sister has any sense, they're like, man, why are you talking? You don't help me with things of the world. You have to understand, you know, especially at a Bible-believing church like us, don't bring worldly stuff into the church. Amen. That's not doing best for Jesus Christ. I mean, you have no desire to do best for Jesus Christ. If your loved one says, do not talk about topic A because it's bad for you. If you truly love that person, you're not going to talk about it. But you talk about it because you have no respect for that person. You don't fear that person. You don't love that person. I mean, when you get into a fight, you know, spouses, right? Husband and wife. And you guys know what hurts each other if you have love, I mean, live long enough, right? And you get so angry. And then you say stuff that you're not supposed to say. I mean, probably you bring up something from like 15, 20 years ago, you know, what they've done wrong to you. Even yes. though they asked for forgiveness, you know, they've changed, right? But for this separate incident, you're so angry. So you bring this thing out. And then you're like, ah, oh, I can never forget, you know? You know, it, it hurts me still, right? I mean, that's not gonna help each other. But if you truly love that person, and you'll be like, you know what, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna talk about it. You know, yes. I love that person, so I'm not yes. going to talk about it. Even though how angry I am, you know, how I think the other person at fault, I'm not going to talk about it, right? Because you're doing your best to please the person that you love. But when it comes to serving Jesus Christ, you just have no desire to really give your best to him. Don't think that coming to church, coming to street preaching, it's all everything, right? You think that's you're doing your best, right? Yeah, in a way. But what matters most is what you do outside of this church ministry. Yes. Because what you do outside of this church ministry will eventually show in church ministry. It shows. Like your attitude inside the church shows what kind of Christian you are outside the church. Your participation in the church, it shows what kind of Christian you are outside the church. Simple as that. Like you can't be like, ah. I love the Lord Jesus Christ, but I don't need to go to church. You don't obey the Bible. You don't care about it, right? I love the Lord. You know, I don't need to be at church just once a week. You know, forget about street preaching. You know, forget about those lost souls out there. I love them. You know, I pray for them. Yeah, right. You know, you're all fooling yourselves. Do you really love Jesus Christ? Have you really done your best for Jesus Christ? I mean, do you want to do best for Jesus Christ? Yes. And be honest with yourself. If you don't want to do best for Jesus Christ, then don't do it. Don't be a hypocrite and say, you know what? You know, I do it. I mean, that's the worst thing as a Christian because there are so many liars. I mean, many of you guys are just liars. You come to church, you act like you're holy, but you're not. Yeah. I mean, should we film you outside of church, what you do? Because you're not. I mean, the pure fact that your actions and conversation don't show you love Jesus Christ, you should never say it. I mean, it makes you look bad. It makes your family look bad. It makes the church look bad. That's why it's always better to be silent, you know, like the Proverbs. Yes. You know, when you're silent, you look wise, right? Don't talk. Don't open your mouth if it's not going to glorify Jesus Christ. Don't open your mouth if you know that whatever you're saying will not show that you have done for Jesus Christ. Because it's ridiculous for us, anybody, any Christians to hear and say, you know what, I've done so well at church. I mean, I've done so well at work. I work extra hours. I got my promotions and stuff. Okay. But what have you done for Jesus Christ? I've done so hard for my school. You know, I got good grades because I didn't go to sleep and everything to do my best. Okay. What have you done for Jesus Christ? You're like, oh, man, I've done so well for this relationship that I have. I'm trying to solve it and stuff, you know. Okay. What have you done for Jesus Christ? I mean, you're in a hot mess. Why? Because you don't have desire to do best for you, Jesus Christ. Right? Even today, how many of you guys actually walk up and pray to the Lord and spend time with the Lord before you came to church? Or you were just like, oh, everybody, let's hurry, hurry, you know. Yeah, I mean, your attitude's like this. 
I'm, I'm like that too. I mean, you're tired, you wake up, I mean, you're groggy, you're cranky, and you want extra minutes of sleep. You go back to sleep. And then you know that you have to leave your home at like 9 o'clock, and then you barely wake up, try to calculate whatever you need to do to get him ready in five minutes, and then run, you know, wear whatever, you know, and then come. And then you're like, ah, I'm ready to serve Jesus Christ today. I mean, it's almost like this. You know, when you, as you grow older, or even young people, before you actually compete in sport, people say you need to stretch so that your body will be ready. Yes. If you don't, what happens? You, you, you know, you sprain, strain, you break something, right? Right. When it comes to serving Jesus Christ, you know, you got to stretch. You have to be ready. Amen. I mean, the first thing, you don't stretch at the end of the night and be like, okay, everything was good. No, you do stretch twice. You know, best way to keep your body is wake up, stretch, and then before you go to sleep, you know, stretch, right? Yes. But when it comes to spiritual life, if you think that's best for your body, you got to do your best. Amen. Especially your aching, especially your health is at, you know, risk. But when it comes to your spiritual life, your spiritual life is at risk every single day. Yes. Don't you know that the devil, as a roaring lion, wants to destroy you? Right. Even right now. Again, I say this because your head is just spinning. Because devil's attacking. Mm -hmm. yes. you know, the devils are just going through your brains, right? Yes. Trying to give you those bad thoughts. Right. And then for some of you, you don't care. You don't care about my message. And I don't wow. care about you either. All I care about is my relation with Lord Jesus Christ. Because if I start caring about what other people think, again, don't get me wrong. You, you love your brethren, you know, encourage brethren, you help out especially those weak brothers and sisters in Christ. But for many of you, all you think about is what other people think. So that's why you can't do your best for Jesus Christ. What would that sister think about me? What would that brother think about me? You know what? I want them to think this way. Who cares? Right? Amen. I mean, you got to think about what Jesus Christ yes. thinks about. That's why you don't do your best. Because he's not number one in your life. He's not. Don't lie to me. You, young people, you wanna, your goal is to get the best job possible, get the best grade possible. Your goal is not to serve Jesus Christ and love him, number one. You might have got them from your parents. Shame on your parents. However, if it's your parents, the godly parents, teaching you the right doctrine, teaching you to love Lord Jesus Christ, and if you reject it, that's on you. I mean, these kids, this day and age, they're so wicked. They're just literally wicked. You know, I mean, well, what generation am I? It's a, something after baby boomers, you know, Generation X or early, early millennium or whatever it is. Like Z, late millennials, they have no, no sense of, you know, common sense. They, they don't have anything. They think they're so entitled, right? right? And if their parents or preachers, anybody points them out, their first reaction is, you know, I know better than you, right? You know, I, I'm, I know better than you. I mean, you learn. You reap what you sow. That's you know, your parents will tell you. You know, Galatians 6 eventually happens. You know, don't ever think that it's not going to happen. You reap what you sow. That's yeah. a scary part. So if you haven't sown yet, it's coming. That's why you pray to God for his grace. You pray for his mercy so that you could reap as little as possible. Yes. You have to because it's not going to be erased. It's for, I mean, it's forgiven, but you have to pay for it. That's why God is fair. Then as young people, you have to think, what is number one thing in my life? Is my desire to love Jesus Christ number one? Or is that something else? Think about it. it. It doesn't take too long for you to answer. Is your desire to be loved by your peers, by peer pressure? I mean, you want to be popular at school? I mean, I don't know what popular really means nowadays, right? You know, is it you have a lot of following in social media or is it like you, have, you do drugs so that you'll be cool? You know, you smoke or you just sleep with everybody. Is that the popular thing, right? No, you're called adulterer. I mean, you're, you're a whoremonger, right? Yes. 
You know, you're a fornicator, you know. It's not about, you know, some people say, oh, I'm in a serious relationship. What is it? What constitutes or what defines a serious relationship, right? You're just a whoremonger, right? Amen. That's what you are. And you're like, oh, don't call me a whore or a harlot. That's what Bible says, Amen. you know. And first thing you should do is admit it, right? Yes. There's always a way out once you admit it. Then if you have put education, job, or anything else, relationship, you know, whoremongering is your number one, then you have to get right with the Lord. Yes. Think about it. If my desire is to love Jesus Christ, but I put my work or anything else number one, you know, I can't say it. I shouldn't even say it. I shouldn't even mention it, right? Even as a preacher, right? Because I'm lying to myself. I'm lying to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. However, if you put, once you have that desire, your goal, your priority to be your love for Jesus Christ, then your life will change. Don't worry about what's going to happen. Oh, what's going to happen, you know, if I put my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ first, if I love him first, I desire him first, what's going to happen? Good things will happen. Amen. Your worldly friends will just disappear. Amen. I mean, you're like, oh, I need to have friends, you know. I don't want to be a loner at school. Who cares? Amen. Man, do you have to be loved by other folks who's not saved, who's children of the devil? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, you guys know the story of Romeo and Juliet. I mean, they hated each other, families, right? I mean, you have godly family and you have devil's family. But for many of you, you just want love from the devilish people constantly. It's like you don't care about godly family. You just want love from the devilish family. I mean, what's wrong with you, right? I mean, sometimes you just have to really check yourself and check your heart, your attitude, and check your brain, check your minds, you know, check your everything, right? I mean, why is it that I love praise of men more than praise of God? I love praise and, you know, I love lust of the flesh more than spiritual blessings. Why do I love, you know, being filled with the devils than filled with the Holy Ghost? It's because something's wrong with you, yes. right? Your actions will show. Don't lie. I mean, the, the best thing is that you just don't lie, yeah. right? Amen. Because as Christians, as human beings, number one thing, number one, you know, I come to a conclusion as I've, you know, been in the ministry for many, many years is that I get in trouble, you get in trouble, well, you know, when you just lie. Yeah. You know, you're not honest, you know, and that's a, that's a characteristic flaw. As a human being, you know, you, you just love to lie. And, and then don't, don't be like, you know, I don't lie. You're lying already, right? It's like you're asking someone, are you a sinner? No, I'm not a sinner. You know, I haven't killed anybody, you know, I haven't robbed a bank. I mean, but you're a sinner, right? It's like this, so things like that. So you have to be honest today. You know, if you have put, if you never had desire to really love Lord Jesus Christ, if you, did, if you didn't have desire to really do best for Jesus Christ, then you have to get right with the Lord. Because without that, you can't do anything else. Because everything else won't be blessed by the Lord. Amen. You know, of course, his, wor his word will work. I mean, it's a living word of God. But there's nothing for you then, Right? I mean, if you don't do it willingly, if you do it because you're forced to do it, don't think that you're going to get any reward, right? If you're serving in the orchestra, you do it because your parents make you do it without from your heart, you know, you're not going to get anything. Don't do it. God doesn't want to see any pouting child doing things that they don't want to do, but they're forced to do it. Right? It's like this. It's true preaching, too. If you're not out there to, because you love the souls out there, but you're out there just because of your appearance sake, don't be out there. It's not going to help you, right? Even coming to church, doing Bible study, teaching, if your heart's not in it, don't do it. If you're not there to put Jesus Christ first, if you don't love the Lord, you know, don't do it. It's not going to work. I mean, you think that you are okay, but it's not. People could see through you. 
Did you know people are not that dumb? You could try to lie to people, but people could see through you. And on top of that, Lord will give him wisdom to see through you. That's the scary part. Yeah. Man. Yeah. You know that person is lying straight through their teeth, right? And the Lord has shown you the things. And they still lie. That's human being. You know, that's why you have to first go to the Lord and get right with the Lord. And if you don't, and this simple, no reward for you, it's just shame and shame after shame after shame after shame. And you just gonna keep on reaping your sins over and over and over and over. There's no peace in your life. There's no joy in your life. I'm like, man, I, I'm so-called Bible believer. But what's going on in my life? You know, I mean, I'm, and, and you start blaming everybody else because blame game starts, you know. Man, it's my pastor's fault, pastor's wife's fault. It's that brother, sister, you know. I mean, you know, I've, nothing has gone right, you know, since I came to this church. We have people who left the church because of that. Like, you know, first few days, first few weeks, even a year or two, they're like, man, it's so great that I found a Bible-believing church. And like things don't go well in their life because of their sins, you know, and because of their past sins. They're like, ah, it's all their fault. I would rather go back. Isn't that a very similar story that you've heard in the Old Testament? Yes. Man, I mean, I've heard that from Israelites, right? Yes. They're like, I'd rather go back to Egypt. Yes. Really? I don't know. It's like you'd rather go to a dunghill. Than to stay in a clean place, right? It's like a, you're like a you know swine, you know. Yes. I'm in the Bible, right? Yes. Unsaved women are compared to swine. You just like go there. You just want to play in that dirty things, and then you think you're so happy, but <laughs> you come out. You're very stinky. You smelly. Yes. Right? You're no good. Why? Because you don't have desire. Israelites didn't have it. They didn't have the desire to do their best for their God. That's why they fell into those issues. You fall into issues. You fall into trouble because you don't have desire. You don't want to do your best for the Lord Jesus Christ. Even the Bible clearly says, whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. That's why if anything else has gotten in the way of you doing your best for the Lord, you have to get rid of it today. If you don't today, it's going to stay there until, I don't know, maybe something terrible happens to you. And the Lord has to really get your attention. Because it's going to happen. Because he loves you, he loves me. Whom the Lord loveth, he will chastise. Chastise. So he's going to chastise you. Simple as that. I don't know. Your health will deteriorate. You'll lose everything financially. You know, you lose your loved ones. You know, something will happen to you. Yes. Why? Because that's what happened in the Word of God. Yes. You know, look at David. You know, man after God's own heart. Murder, adultery, and he had to pay for it. Right. And you think you're better than David? No, sir. See? That's why, you know, it comes back to it. Your tongue, very important. Especially inside a church, there's no reason for you to show that you're not doing best for the Lord Jesus Christ. Simple as that. That's, that's like fool saying, you know what, I'm a fool. <laughs> they don't know you're a fool, but you're, you tell them you're a fool. Don't say you're a fool. And especially outside of church. Don't act like a fool. If they already know that you're a Christian, they should, you yes. know. If they don't, you've been hiding it. Because God gives every opportunity to confess him before anybody, Amen. right? I mean, either it's indirectly or directly, yes. right? Some conversation comes up like, Hey, you know, what did you do over the weekend? You know, I went to church. Amen. You know, I spent my, most of my Sunday at a church. 
And then they're like, oh, yeah, he's a Christian, you know. She's a Christian. But if your answer is like, yeah, you know, and the, yeah, you know, I went to this sporting event, you know, I went to this club, I party, you know. Wow. They're like, okay, you know, forget about you, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like first thing that comes out of your mouth. Or some of you might be scared because your desire is not to love the Lord Jesus Christ. Like, what do you do over the weekend? Uh, you know, I've done some stuff, right? <laughs> you, a lot of people, you say, I, I relax, you know. You're just scared. Scary kid. Of course, you have to be wise about it. But what's wrong? You have freedom of speech Amen. that you go to church, right? Yes. I mean, every other religion could be bold about everything that they do. Right. But why can't you do it? Are you going to get fired for it? Come on. You're not, right? And you're like, I love the Lord. You don't. You're full of yourself. Amen. I think that's number one thing. One of the most, how should I say, overused, cliche, you know, hypocritical statement. Right? I love Jesus. Do you really? Right? I mean, your conversation should show it. Your actions and your tongue, your speech, everything should show that you love Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you? Once you actually committed everything to the Lord and you have desire to serve him, then I think you could say it, right? Because when I wake up, you know, I spend time with the Lord, everything revolves around him. You know, I'm ashamed to say because I'm still weak, but my desire, you know, I love the Lord. But don't say it, you know, when you're like, you don't do anything for the Lord except, you know, when people could see at church days that you love the Lord. You know, that's, that's being hypocritical. Yeah. I'd rather have you and me be honest and, you know, and be, a, how should I say, not a bad example, yeah. but you're honest, right? Than someone who's a bad example and dishonest. Uh, you know, don't bring your fake smiles and be like, yeah, what a great week. You know, <laughs> inside of you, you're like, man, what a terrible week. You know, man, I thought I would have a better life as a Christian. But as I grow older and older, you know, it's not going better. I mean, as Bob Jones Sr. said, the problem is with you. It's not your mommy. It's not your daddy. Maybe for young ones, you know, under 18. But even then, now you guys know everything. The problem is always with you. Once you realize that problem is with you, then you could do something about it. Like, Lord, I haven't done my best for you. I want to do something. Uh, if I need to change, Lord, help me to change. Amen. You, know, you hate changes, right? You know, you're so comfortable in your own ways. True. I mean, if Lord was comfortable in his own ways, he would never have died for you right. and me. You have to always think about changes for the better. Yes. Because... If you don't change right now, even after this message, you'll, you'll just stay the same. It's like people who reject Jesus Christ. You know, they always say, okay, I'll think about it tomorrow. I'll think about it tomorrow. I and mean, those people never get saved. Because it's not that important to them. If loving Lord Jesus Christ is very important to you, you're not going to put it off to tomorrow, Right? You know what? I'm going to start spending time with the Lord tomorrow. Why don't you do it today? You know, from the habits of human being, when I always put it off to tomorrow, I put it off to next day, next day, next day. It becomes very easy. So you don't do it today, then you're not going to do it. If you say, I'm going to love the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm going to do my best for Jesus Christ, I mean, it starts right now. Yes. If you haven't been really paying attention like you should through the Word of God, through the preaching and through the Bible study, it starts now, right? Yes. But you say, oh, you know what? I'm so tired. Why are you tired? Is it because of you? Or is it because of someone else? Or is it because of the devil? Why are you tired? It's because of you. But you know yourself better than anybody. If you, you know that you have to be alert for Sunday preaching and everything, then you make yourself sure, make sure, right? Yes. If you need to get eight hours of sleep, get eight hours of sleep. 
don't do stupid things and then sleep like two hours Amen. You're watching stupid things, you know. And you're like, I'm so tired, right? And, you know, people hate this ex excuse, right? Well, yeah, I had to study all night. Okay. You, they, you didn't have a chance to study all night during the whole week. Right. And it had to be, you know, before church stuff. All the time, young kids always give that excuse, right? You know, I had to study all night. And then, oh, yeah? Okay. And you're the type of person who will never give your best for the Lord Jesus Christ. If it's not school, next time it's going to be work. Because of work, you know, I can't do anything. Next time it's going to be a relationship. No, I have to spend more time with, you know, my loved ones, right? Yeah. And then people always think that, you know, your time is yours. It's not. If you want to do your best for Lord Jesus Christ, remember that every second of your life is Lord's. Amen. It's the master's. Yes. You have no say. That's, that's where you become cuckoo because of your worldly education, worldly friends, system. You let them really pollute you. You're like, you know, there's priorities in my life. And my goal is to succeed in life. My goal is to show to others that our family is successful. Yeah. Sacrifice everything. And what are you sacrificing? You're always sacrificing Jesus Christ. Man, that's, that's a hard thing to swallow, right? I sacrifice Jesus Christ for my own good. How many times have you sacrificed your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for your own good? Too many. Man, when He sacrificed His life for you, you constantly sacrifice Him for your own good. Oh, one more minute of sleep, you know, more pleasure, right? More money, right? When Lord provides all your needs, that's a promise. You do your best, it's going to provide it. So don't worry about it. But you want more and more and more. You're lusting after things of the world. Yes. And then Lord's looking at you like, okay, I sacrificed my own life. It's not a quick death, right? What Lord had to go through. It wasn't a guillotine death. Right. I mean, he had to die on the cross, shedding his precious blood, every drop of blood. Yes. Suffocating on the cross. And then you're telling me, huh? And you know I'm living inside of you. And you're still with the Holy Ghost. You're constantly being convicted. Why are you just rejecting? And at the judgment seat of Christ, what do you think is going to happen? Man, I sacrificed my all for you, but you constantly sacrifice me for your own good. That's why many Christians are not the light of this world. You're a part of the darkness. Amen. I mean, shame on me and shame on you. Yes. I mean, people should see the light. People should see Jesus Christ in your life, in your conversation, everything about you, right? Your facial expression, your speech, your dress, every little thing. Yes. But no, you're no different than the darkness of this world. You're so happy when you're talking about this Hollywood stuff, right? Oh. You're so happy when you are talking about working worldly things, you know? Yeah. I'll be, I'll be ashamed to talk about it. And especially if you are saved, right? Yes. And sometimes maybe some of you need to really check your salvation because you grew up in the church. Maybe you think you're saved, you know? According to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, right? Some believe in vain. Just because you repeated a prayer after someone doesn't mean that you're saved. Right. You have to truly have known that you're a sinner on your way to hell. Repenting heart, receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Yes. Not because someone told you to do it. Yes. Because I feel like in heaven, unfortunately, we're going to not see some folks that, we, that will be there, right? Yes. And of course, it's not going to be surprised. We're going to see some people that will never be there, right? But you, especially some people in a bible between church, will be in that crowd where they think they're safe, but they're not. If you are living a sinful life and there's nothing happening, 
there are no consequences, maybe you should check. Now, I'm not saying you, you're not saved, but you should kind of check, right? right? Because it's contrary to the word of God. And if you have no conviction when you're sinning now, you really have to check. Yes. Either you have become a total backslidden Christian, you're just waiting to die. According to Romans 8, 13, if you live, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Or you're maybe unsaved. Yeah. Maybe you're fathers of the John 8, 44. Yeah. Maybe you, you, you actually have a different father than, you know, us. Yeah. Saved Christians. You're like, oh, man. You're throwing cold water, icy water at me, you know. Yeah, I hope you wake up. Yes. Because it's better to realize, go through some shame in your life than burn in hell forever. Amen. It's, it's better for you to be in shame a little bit as a Christian and get right. Yes, sir. It's better you to, you know, let people see your bad side and worst side, dirty side, yes. polluted side, sinful side, and then get right. Then you hide it your whole life. And people see it at the judgment seat of Christ. Can you imagine? We don't know exactly how it's going to be. But you have millions of Christians just seeing your life playing through at the judgment seat of Christ. I mean, that's going to be terrible. <laughs> you know, even in this congregation, if someone were to really have you sit here, and examine everything that went wrong with your life, man, you'll be like sick, you know? you probably throw up. Yes. But can you imagine? Like, say people and the Lord Jesus Christ as a judge, mm -hmm. judging you for everything that you've done after you got saved, yes. whether it be good or bad, man, that's terrible. You have to start thinking about future. You have to be future-minded. Right? Future-minded people usually would love the Lord more because you want the Lord to come back right now. If I want my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to come back right now, I think I'm going to show that I love Him. You know, not just cheap words only, but actually through my actions. That's why if you truly want the Lord to come back right now, it will show. If the Lord were to come back at 2 p.m. today, what are you going to do? Right? Would you be thinking some stupid stuff on your head? Like, oh, yeah, what's going to happen at school, at work, blah, blah, blah? No. Probably you probably grab a Bible and start reading it, you know, start talking about witnessing to other people, you know, just only have a conversation about things of heaven, not things of the earth. But why is it that that's not your normal lifestyle? It's not your normal conversation. Answer simple, brethren. Because you don't love the Lord. Because you don't want to do your best for Lord Jesus Christ. It's time for you to admit. It's time for every one of us to really examine our life from top to bottom. When we wake up, when we go to sleep, everything in between. And see, am I, have I really done my best for my Savior and Lord Jesus Christ? Or have I been just a hypocrite? Just shameful, dirty, hypocrite. It's okay. Admit it. That's why 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You get right with the Lord. You want to do your best for the Lord, just like the hymn that we sang. Then you'll be that person who will be showing to those lost souls out there how to get saved through your actions, through your conversation. You could actually do something for the Lord. You could actually have the Lord smile when he thinks about your life instead of being saddened for the majority of you guys. That's why we have to take this to our heart. Have I done my best for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Not 10 years ago. Not five years ago, right now. Let's pray. Dear Father, it's not an easy subject when we have to examine each part of our life and 
just admit all the faults and sins that are ruling our life and being honest about it. Or because we're such dishonest people, we try to fool others, we're hypocritical, Lord God. Help us just get rid of those characteristics once and for all. Help us be honest with you. Help us to just have that desire to love you, Lord, do our best for you, Lord. I mean, that's what the Bible says. But even besides from that, just the fact that you loved us and you sacrificed everything for us, we do bare minimum, if any, sacrifice for you. And instead, we sacrifice you for our own goods, Lord God, and our own advancement. Help us to realize it, confess our sins, and get right with you, Lord. I pray that you bless everyone here and who's listening to really get right with you and do truly our best for you in every situation, every day. And I pray that you come soon, Lord Jesus. I mean, that's our number one prayer, Lord. Bless the rest of the day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.